The so-called mating crisis among younger generations has finally been recognised by mainstream institutions. In 2023, many media outlets reported on data from the Pew Research Centre showing that among American adults under the age of 30, 63% of men and 34% of women were currently single. Meanwhile, data from the US General Social Survey revealed that the number of adults reporting no sexual experiences during the previous year had steadily increased, from just 16% in 1989 to 26% in 2021. Moreover, throughout much of the world, fertility rates have fallen below replacement levels, with many countries experiencing record low birth rates as of 2023. In the study of population dynamics, this process is part of the demographic transition. Agrarian societies are characterised by stable populations, since higher birth rates are offset by equally higher death rates. In particular, child mortality is often as high as 50%. With industrialization, population grows rapidly as birth rates remain higher but death rates decline due to improvements in food supply, medicine and sanitation. Eventually, population growth levels off as people adjust their fertility to match lower rates of child mortality and increasing life expectancy. In the final stage of this transition, characterised by sub-replacement fertility, birth rates fall well below death rates, foreshadowing the collapse of a population. What is the driving force behind this seemingly maladaptive pattern? Researchers with a background in evolutionary theory have pointed to various mismatches that stem from industrialization. In higher stress environments, collectivistic values are favoured. As living conditions improve, people become more individualistic. Family and communal obligations are replaced by a morality of self-fulfillment. Feminism, for example, encourages women to delay having children in order to pursue a career. David Buss predicted that the resulting sex ratio imbalance on university campuses would lead to a mating crisis among educated women. The reason why is that women are attracted to men of higher status, but since more women now graduate than men, their pool of eligible partners is diminished. This is compounded by the fact that the period during which a woman is establishing a career coincides with her prime reproductive years. But the idiosyncrasies of Western culture do not fully explain the mating crisis, since many of the countries with the lowest birth rates are in East Asia. This suggests that technology by itself may be responsible for declining fertility. A concept from ethology can help us understand why. In the study of animal behaviour, supernormal stimuli are exaggerated imitations of naturally evolved objects that exert a stronger pull than the real thing. Nesting birds, for example, will sit on fake eggs painted with bright colours rather than their own. The classic example of a supernormal stimulus applied to humans is junk food. Since calories and nutrients were scarce in our ancestral environment, we evolved a strong preference for foods naturally high in fat, sugar and salt. Junk food takes advantage of this preference by combining those three ingredients in a ratio designed to optimally stimulate the brain's reward circuitry. It should be obvious that technology creates other supernormal stimuli which could plausibly disrupt human mating rituals. Dating apps, for example, expose unattractive men to more rejection in one day than our ancestors would have experienced in a lifetime. Meanwhile, pornography has the opposite effect. It provides immediate sexual gratification without any of the effort associated with courtship. Indeed, Brett Weinstein and Heather Hein have argued that porn produces sexual autism. Those who learn about sexual behaviour via porn have an impaired ability to interact spontaneously with members of the opposite sex. 
In the extreme, they are unable to become aroused by a real-life partner. From an evolutionary perspective, responding to digital images as though they were real seems absurd. But we have to remember that there were no pictures or videos in our ancestral environment. Every naked woman we saw corresponded with an actual opportunity for copulation. So unconsciously, our lizard brain cannot tell the difference between the real thing and its representation. The same dynamic occurs with social media, except this is a supernormal stimulus more suited to female mating psychology. By posing provocatively and posting sexy selfies, a woman can garner attention from high-status men all over the world, thus satisfying her hypergamous desires. But whilst male validation online provides an ego boost, it does not translate into real-life reproductive success, since those high-status men are unlikely to offer any long-term commitment. The researchers Keith Campbell and Gene Twenney have argued that social media is fueling a narcissism epidemic, a flight from reality into a virtual world of fantasy and delusion. In fact, cultivating an online persona is rather like the narcissistic defence of constructing an idealised false self. In line with this observation, many female content creators describe themselves as a goddess, and they are worshipped online by a cult of simps. So perhaps there is a female narcissism epidemic and a male autism epidemic caused by the hypernovel conditions of the digital age. This would be a compelling explanation for the modern mating crisis were it not for the fact that the same dysfunctional patterns of behaviour have been observed in an entirely different species. John Calhoun was an ethologist who spent his career studying the effects of overcrowding on rodent populations. In his famous mouse utopia experiments, he documented the behavioural consequences of an environment in which resources were abundant and the common causes of death had been eliminated, a situation not dissimilar to our own post-industrial society. During the initial phase of the experiment, the mouse populations grew rapidly, but as population density increased, social behaviours began to break down. Overcrowding led to intense competition for mates and resources. The low mortality rate meant that younger generations had no opportunity to take over the social roles occupied by their elders. As a result, many of the younger males withdrew from active competition whilst the older males were no longer able to defend their territories due to the sheer number of rivals. This left nursing females vulnerable to invasion of their nest sites, and so they had to become more aggressive, essentially adopting the role of a territorial male. But territorial defence is incompatible with maternal care, and in the process, many females injured or abandoned their young. As a result, population growth began to stagnate since fewer offspring were surviving to sexual maturity. Those that did survive, however, were behaviourally abnormal. Having been prematurely rejected by their mothers, they failed to develop adequate emotional attachments. Due to the lack of suitable role models, their ability to learn social skills was disrupted. The behavioural repertoire of these mice was limited to eating, sleeping and grooming. More complex social behaviours, like courtship and maternal care, failed to develop. In fact, the males of this generation were dubbed the beautiful ones. They never engaged in sexual competition or territorial defence, and so they had immaculate fur with no wounds or scar tissue. Observers of human society will surely see parallels in the rise of so-called herbivore men and strong independent women, the latter of which have recently embraced the acronym SINC, single income, no kids, to describe their child-free lifestyle. This is ironic, of course, because it appears that, like the rodents in the mouse utopia experiment, 
we too are in what Calhoun called a behavioural sink. Hyper-aggressive women and effeminate men could not rear healthy, well-adjusted children even if they wanted to have them. In both mice and humans, the combination of deficient maternal care and the absence of male role models is a developmental disaster. Individuals born amid this social chaos will be so impaired as to make reproduction impossible. Calhoun said that autistic-like creatures, capable only of the most simple behaviours compatible with physiological survival, emerge out of this process. Their spirit has died. Once the ability to engage in complex social behaviours is lost, a population is doomed. The mouse colonies in Calhoun's experiments never recovered. Even as the overcrowding abated, the remaining members failed to reproduce and simply died of old age. Reflecting on their demise, Calhoun was reminded of the biblical prophecy in the book of Revelation. He said that threatening life and evolution are the two deaths, death of the spirit and death of the body. By inadvertently increasing population density, the goal of modern medicine, reduction of the second death, bodily mortality, leads inexorably to the first death, death of the spirit. In post-industrial society, that is the problem we face today, a loss of the capacity to engage in behaviours essential to the survival of our species. The behavioural sink is a vortex from which no one escapes.